Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's the official start to Chapter 2. This is a big lesson. I've tried to do this over two days with a lab and some lots of practice time in between. We are going to talk about Le Chatelier's principle. We call it LCP in Chem 12 because I'm a gangster. So LCP talks about equilibrium, and he had one massive idea. His principle is... If you take a closed system, and it's in equilibrium, and it's perfectly happy, and you change it, it will do whatever it takes to counteract your change. Okay, That's all fine and dandy. Here's my simplistic version of it. Whatever you do to the system, the system is going to undo. So we are going to have an equilibrium, and we are going to mess it up. We are going to change something. And that equilibrium will then undo my change. So here's a couple of examples. If we have an equilibrium and I add heat, it is going to want to use up that heat. If I cool it down, it's going to want to warm itself back up. If I increase the concentration of something in that equilibrium, then it is going to want to reduce the concentration. If I increase the total pressure of that equilibrium, well then the equilibrium will do whatever it takes to reduce the total pressure. So whatever I do to the system, that equilibrium system will then undo it. It'll try to go back to the way it was. And it does that by shifting to the reactant side or to the product side. And you'll see exactly what I mean right here. If I take this equilibrium, A and B, with some heat going to C and D, and I increase the temperature, this reaction will try to remove the temperature that I just added, remove the heat that I added. So to remove the heat, the reactants will react more. The forward rate will increase and it will shift to the product side. So when I increase the heat, it shifted to the side where there was no heat. It shifted away from the heat. It's using up that heat. So it means that there will be a new equilibrium where C and D have increased a bit and there is a little bit less A and B. This is a shift to the right. The opposite I'll do in red. If I decrease the heat, it's going to shift in such a way to make more heat. So it is going to shift to the left. So when I removed the heat, the equilibrium will shift left to bring the heat back up to where it was. It undid my change. Okay, So to summarize what I just talked about there, if that's completely over your head, it's totally fine. We're going to do this a million times in the next three days. I changed the temperature. I increased the temperature. Equilibrium shifted away from it to bring it back down to where it was. If I decrease the temperature, equilibrium will shift toward the heat to make more heat to bring it back up to where it was. It's either shifting left, away from the heat, or right towards the heat. Okay, Left or right towards the heat or away from the heat. Here's another example. I'll do it in uh, blue. The heat term is right here. If I increase the temperature, it's going to shift away to get rid of what I just added. So it's going to shift to the right. In red, if I decrease that temperature, it's going to shift to that heat to make more. So it's going to shift left. Okay? Let's keep going. It'll click at some point. This example is exothermic. I'm just going to write it so we can see that heat term to help everybody out. The heat term will be on the product side. If I increase the temperature, it's going to shift away from that heat to bring it back down to the way it was. So it's going to shift to the left. If I decrease the temperature, I'll do it again in pink. If I decrease that temperature, it's going to shift to the heat to warm itself back up. Okay, It's going to do whatever I it's going to undo whatever I do. 
It doesn't matter if I'm talking about concentration, temperature, volume, pressure, anything. Let's keep moving then. See if this starts to click a little bit more. If I'm talking about concentration or partial pressure, which is the same thing when we have a gas, if I add some H2 to that system, if I increase the amount of H2, it's going to shift in such a way to remove what I added. So it's going to shift to the right. I add some H2, it says, I don't want you to add any H2. So it shifts to the right, uses up the H2 that I just added. Okay? In a different color, red, if I remove I2, the system says, I don't want you to remove I2. So I'm going to shift to the reactant side, that is where the I2 is, and it's going to make more. Whatever I do to the system, the system will undo it. Okay, different color, green. If I add some HI, if I spike up the concentration of HI, the system will then shift left away from the HI. So to fill in these blanks, if I add some HI, the amount of HI would immediately increase. It does not want that to happen. To counteract that change, equilibrium would shift to the left, away from there bring it back down to the way it was. So when it shifts to the left, I'm going to have a little more H2I2, and HI will go right back down to the way it was. It undid my change. So to summarize, if I change the concentration, it's going to undo it. If I increase a concentration, it's going to shift away from that to bring itself back down to the way it was. If I decrease the concentration, it's going to shift toward that side. It undoes my change. Okay, so try these six, and you tell me, um, and you check your answers with these. Just put left or right. Okay, so pause it now and give it a try, and I'll put the answers in. To the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. And we will talk about those in class tomorrow. In fact, you give these a chance, try on your own, and we will do those in class tomorrow. Okay? If I change the total pressure or the total volume, it's going to affect everything in that equilibrium. Okay? You need to remember that a decrease in volume means you're increasing pressure, and an increase in volume means that you are decreasing pressure. It is going to shift to the side reactants or product to bring it back to where it was. It says here, if the total pressure of the system is increased, think of that as decreasing the volume. If you increase the pressure, you decrease the volume. You can't put as much in a small volume as you can a large volume. So if you decrease the volume, it goes to the side where you go where there's the least amount of stuff. Small space, small amount of stuff. Big space, large amount of stuff. Let's try some. Here's my example. I've got four moles of gas on this side and only two moles of gas on that side. If I increase the total volume, it's going to want to fill that space up. So it's going to go to the side where there's more stuff, which is left. If I shrink the container, it can't put a lot of stuff in a small container. So it's going to go to the side where there's the least amount of stuff. If I make the container small, it goes to the small number of moles side. If I make the container big, it goes to the big number of moles side. No tricks. Okay? So give that one a shot. Okay? A and B are tricky, so write this out. If I increase the pressure, that means I decrease the volume. And in for B, if I decrease the pressure, it means I increase the volume. And see if you can fill those in. We will do those tomorrow as a class. One final point, last thing I want to make. This has absolutely nothing to do with rates. A rate question and a shift question are two different questions. Yes, of course, they're related to each other in some strange way, like cousins in Texas. But if I'm asking you for a rate, you think back to everything in Chapter 1. 
when I'm asking you for a shift, you think of only this lesson right here. Okay? Shifting and rates are not the same. So what do I exactly mean by that? Well, let's look at a really simple question. If I increase the temperature, what is it going to do to the rate? Well, that's, it's going to increase the rate. I'm not asking you for a shift here. Now I am. If I increase the temperature, equilibrium will shift where? If I increase the heat, it's going to shift to the right, away from it. In C, if I decrease the temperature, what's it going to do to the rate? Well, it's going to decrease the rate. But if I decrease the temperature, what's it going to do to equilibrium? Well, change my color. If I decrease the temperature, it's going to shift left to make more heat, to bring itself back up. Two totally different questions. Temperature will do something to the rate. Temperature will also do something else to equilibrium. And we will do number seven in class tomorrow as a group. Ladies and gentlemen, that's section 2.4. We will be continuing this for a few more days.